Hey Smugstick, it's everyone. Welcome to a new episode of What If Piccolo Got Its Potential Unlocked Early. Previously, Bobbity and his men teamed up with Dr. Jiro, releasing Majin Buu. However, Jiro betrayed Bobbity and used his Super Android 13 to fight off against Buu, only to have it be absorbed and for Buu to become an even bigger threat. But thanks to the hard work of Piccolo and Gohan, he was ultimately defeated. Unbeknownst to them, Lord Beerus had woken up from a dream about a Super Namekian warrior. The like goal for this video is 4,000 likes, and the next part is already up on Patreon. Let's begin with the story. It's been two years since the defeat of Boo. Piccolo continues training Goten and Trunks. Their power has grown in incredible ways, alongside Gohan, who trains occasionally as well. Their power up thanks to the old Kai has proven to be exactly what they needed. Now, any of them could have easily dealt with Dabora, and maybe even Boo. Gohan was more focused on school though. Vegeta and Goku didn't get their power unlocked, but they did train at the Kaioshin Realm, as to not destroy anything. Goku also revealed to Goten and Trunks the Time Chamber, which helps them a lot. One day, while Goku and Vegeta battle at the Kaioshin Realm, Shin interrupts them, as he is absolutely terrified. Lord Beerus, the god of destruction, had been awoken. Whis had told Beerus that not only did the Namekian who killed Frieza live on Earth, but so did many Saiyans who survived the destruction of planet Vegeta. Vegeta feels his heart sink. Beerus? He was a destructive monster that terrorized his father. He hadn't heard from him in many years. Was Earth in peril? This Goku doesn't know instant transmission, so Kaioshin teleports them to Earth. They appear at the lookout, where Gohan, Goten, and Trunks are training. Their future version of course, since the present ones are still only two years old. Shin and Vegeta quickly warn Piccolo and the boys about the situation at hand. The lookout is gonna be a very dangerous place when they show up. Piccolo knows from the look in Shin's eyes that this is very serious. They can't anger him. According to Shin, food is the one thing he really loves. With Vegeta's help, they get Capsule Corp chefs to pack food in capsules so they can take it to Yansubit Heights, away from anyone Beerus could possibly hurt. However, as they were about to depart, with as much food as they could quickly make, the flash of light landed at Capsule Corp. Beerus had arrived. It was clear that the God of Destruction was imposing, though his power couldn't be read correctly. Beerus is happy to be met with a banquet, though the food seemed to have been rushed. In an attempt to appease the God, Vegeta offered him better food if he was willing to wait. Prince Vegeta, what a surprise. I'm not here to eat, though I will take it. I'm looking for the Namekian who defeated Frieza. From the door steps out Piccolo. Beerus smirks. Yes, this was the heavenly Namekian he dreamed of. Beerus said that he wanted to battle him. He had a dream of a Namekian that could rival his powers. Piccolo smirked. Yeah, that was him. He was sure he could take on the God of Destruction. But Beerus wasn't about to let all this food go to waste. First, time to eat. Piccolo sat back and analyzed the god as he ate, and Gohan discussed the situation. They didn't want to anger him. Piccolo tells Gohan that, although he is confident on his abilities, the power of the god of destruction was unreadable. He feared that this time, it wouldn't be enough. To give you perspective on Piccolo's power, when he first obtained Potential Unleashed, I imagined him around Super Saiyan 3 Goku level in the Buu arc, growing even further to nearly reach Ultimate Gohan at the point where Super Buu 13 was defeated. Of course, this is a whole 7 years prior to when Gohan would have unlocked that. He has grown above that in his potential unleashed state. All of the other heroes are slowly climbing their way up, as the gap isn't as crazy as it used to be. Since there is no one to challenge Piccolo, it's harder for him to grow stronger. At least, until now. But Gohan's eyes widened as he watched his father approach Beerus. With a cheeky smirk, Goku challenged the God of Destruction. Beerus couldn't believe the Dragon Balls on this man. Even while Beerus refused, Goku spins and throws a punch, only to be blocked. This, however, causes Beerus to spill his drink. Vegeta runs to Goku and tries to drag him away, and apologizes, but it's far too late. Beerus is angry, but willing to play with the Saiyan. Goku and Vegeta burst into Super Saiyan 2. Beerus easily avoids the various attacks by the Saiyans with a smirk. He did think they had great potential, but a Super Saiyan God wasn't what he was in the search of, at least not this time. What surprised Beerus was just how tactical they both were, with Goku actually taking advantage of the fact that Vegeta was fighting him to distract Beerus and land a punch. But Beerus responded by smashing his fist against Goku and sending him crashing into Capsule Corp, knocking him out. Goten and Trunks were also something else. It was clear that they had power that had been touched by the Kaioshin, and this interested Beerus. Maybe there was something beyond that, but with ease, he took care of them too. Gohan bursts out of anger. 
getting a small boost and striking Beerus, continuing the fight until the God of Destruction smashed Gohan and Vegeta into each other. While this was happening, Piccolo was collecting his key into his potential unleashed form. Beerus let Gohan go as he turned around with a smirk. Finally, this was the challenge he was waiting for. Beerus and Piccolo clashed. The God of Destruction was holding back heavily in order to see just how much Piccolo would grow. Piccolo's power kept increasing and increasing more and more, actually landing a few strikes on Beerus. But his power's evolution lessened to the point where Beerus was actually disappointed at how strong he was. It was strange, however as Piccolo seemed to be inching himself towards something greater, but he could never get there, like a motorcycle which revs up but never runs. Piccolo was leading him away from the city and towards the wilderness. He was a master tactician, as he used his environment and extending limbs to grapple Beerus and throw him about. Beerus was growing frustrated at this and resorted to exploding out his power with a barrage of blasts from everywhere. Piccolo tried to avoid them, but he was hit multiple times and sent to the ground. The God of Destruction landed before the Namekian, his his hand glowing full of key, threatening to destroy the world. Piccolo scoffs, he couldn't believe it. Ever since his power up, he had been able to deal with nearly every enemy that came his way. Even Super Buu was a mild struggle. Now this god of destruction was challenging him like never before. Piccolo looked to the side, apologizing for failing Earth. That's when Gohan throws himself over at Piccolo. His arms spread open. He wasn't going to allow Beerus to destroy the world. Goku and Vegeta landed, promising Beerus that they could get stronger, they could find the power he was searching for. Beerus mentions the Super Saiyan God he dreamt about, but dismisses it. He wasn't there for that, not this time. He wanted the Namekian, orange, glowing in power. In his premonitions, he was completely different from what Piccolo is. Beerus compliments Piccolo on his power and technique, but says that his power is hollow, as if an entire part of his arsenal is missing. Was he holding back? If he was, then he would destroy Earth. Piccolo thought carefully, a whole part of his power missing. What did he mean by this? Well, Namekian, have you nothing more to show me? Is your planet doomed? Piccolo's heart began beating fast, when suddenly, a flash of light appeared behind Piccolo. Whis cocks an eyebrow. Yes, his key indeed signified a god of Earth. Beerus narrowed his eyes. He already knew what was going on. Piccolo realized it too, as he stood by Kami. Kami explained to Beerus and the others that he sensed his time on Earth was done. He knows what power Piccolo is missing. He bows his head at the Lord. Piccolo asks if he's sure, but Kami has felt this coming a long time. He wished he could have gotten a bit more time to enjoy it, but he would get to experience more things through Piccolo. Beerus rolled his eyes. Could this be any more melodramatic? He told them to get on with it. Goku bid farewell to his old master, as Piccolo placed a hand on his chest. The light nearly blinded them all, as Kami disappeared and Piccolo took a deep breath. He felt a weight lifted off his shoulders like never before, as if he had found something he lost a long time ago. He felt stronger better, faster, he felt whole. Piccolo thanked Kami under his breath, looking up at Beerus with piercing eyes. I am neither Piccolo nor Kami. A Namekian before you is the original lost son of Namek, sent here as a survivor. Is that so? Piccolo will do just fine. Shall we begin? Piccolo smirked, while the rest took steps back. The power they felt coming from him was incredible, nothing like the Piccolo from before. If this Namekian had fought Boo, surely it would have been over in a single attack. They almost missed it, as Piccolo and Beerus flashed upwards and clashed. It was a true spectacle of power, though Piccolo was struggling to control it the way he wanted. But it was fun, the most fun Piccolo had in a long time. Gohan caught him smiling, a rare sight. He had come a long way. Goten and Trunks also watched the fight. It was awesome to see Piccolo like this. If they learned from him, then surely the future safety was guaranteed. The fight continued to rise up to the atmosphere. They burst their auras open, as the key from their power illuminates as if a dragon. For Beerus, it looked like Shenron, but for Piccolo, it looked like Purunga. After all, it was him who gave him this incredible power. All that plus a little extra. The two clashed their fists, shaking the galaxy, but even in this powered up state, Beerus pushed through against Piccolo. He was impressed, but it wouldn't be enough. Piccolo gets punched so hard, he burst out from the atmosphere and into space, his vision becoming blurred. He was getting knocked out of his potential unleashed form. Beerus was happy with how strong he was, but perhaps he used a little too much power this time around but he had to keep testing him. Beerus flew his way to deliver one final, decisive punch. 
Piccolo could only feel the stillness of the world. He sensed Gohan, Goten, Trunks, Goku, and Vegeta down on Earth. He knew they were cheering for him, but he also sensed Namek. No matter how far away it was, he felt Dende, Murray, the various villagers, the Ajisa tree, Purunga itself, but also something else something darker, and, as if him reading Ki was sensed, a Namekian turned to face him, a large man. His surroundings were blurred, he couldn't make them out, but he could sense his immense power. The Namekian tried to reach out, and that's when Piccolo opened his eyes. From the earth below, an explosion was seen, the sign of the Ajiza tree making itself on Piccolo's back. Beerus was left in shock as his punch reached Piccolo, only to feel Piccolo throw a punch right back. The two were locked in together, but Piccolo's punch surprised Beerus too much. His power had increased so suddenly and at such potency that Beerus was actually punched away in a huge explosion. His face was now red and a single drop of blood dripped down. Beerus was the most excited he had ever been. His mouth hung open. No mortal had ever been able to do something like that. But Piccolo, just as fast as he turned into this state, fell forward losing his power completely. His first time achieving it was too surprising. Beerus caught him. Perhaps his visit to Earth was worth it after all. A god giving up his life to face him? This was a true warrior. Piccolo was incapacitated as Beerus descended down. He commented on how his power had evolved a lot more than anticipated, though that strange power will take some time for Piccolo to master. Prior to leaving the planet Earth alone, Beerus commented to Whis how he wants Piccolo to be trained. They're all surprised. Goku and Vegeta are a little little jealous, but they have their own path, really. Piccolo interrupts by saying that he will only train if Gohan is invited as well. Gohan is surprised, as is Beerus. This kid? Gohan even says that he needs to focus more on his schooling, but Piccolo tells him that he can join on the weekends his free time, whenever, but he will need him there. Gohan did want to keep growing alongside Piccolo. He wasn't sure if he fully deserved it, but Piccolo insisted that he was the next generation, and he needed to be the one responsible for the world. Goku commented on how fusing with Kami seemed to have made Piccolo a lot more righteous. Vegeta exclaimed that him and Kakarot should get to train there too. Whis accepts Gohan joining, but tells Vegeta and Goku that they will not stay far behind either. They just need to grow a little more. Beerus was impressed by them all, but that their paths are destined to be much different from one another. Vegeta scoffs, saying that he was happy that Kakarot and himself had nothing but themselves to rely on. They didn't have other halves to fuse with to get to that level. If his Namekian heritage helped him power up, then he was sure their Saiyan heritage would do the same. Gohan accepted, saying that he will need the training as he hadn't been doing as much. Piccolo also did promise to continue training Goten and Trunks so they can go back to their time strong as they can be. Thus, Earth returned to a time of peace. Piccolo went up to Beerus' planet and began the arduous training, though he couldn't access that strange orange form completely, but he wanted to explore it. Gohan was further behind, and it was difficult for Whis to train them together. That's when Gohan remembered something Beerus said. He mentioned a Super Saiyan God. Beerus was already fast asleep, and nobody had any information on the subject. The only idea Gohan had was asking Shenron, but with Kami gone, what were they going to do? Not all hope was lost, as Goku had an idea. Earth wouldn't be Earth without the Dragon Balls, and they needed a new god. They can find a new one on planet Namek. They'll restore the Dragon Balls and ask Shenron. Gohan was a little nervous about it. Was he really deserving of a power like that? But Goku is glad to let him have it. It's just another goal for him to reach. Even so, Piccolo and Goku saw the conflict in his eyes. Gohan, I'm going to be gone one day, and it'll be up to you, Goten and Trunks, to protect the world. I just want to have good fights along the way. I'll catch up, but right now, you need that power, and we'll find it together. Piccolo smiled at the father-son duel, as Shin teleported down from the Kaioshin realm, ready to take them to Namek. A new era was about to begin. Goku, Gohan, and Piccolo teleport to planet Namek with Shin's help. Once they get there, they realize something strange. Very little key can be sensed. It's quiet. In fact, the only key they feel is that which belongs to the Dragon Clan. They make their way to a small village where Dende and Murray lived when Gohan first met them. There, they found a horrific sight. Death and destruction was all that was left. Not only that, there were dead Frieza soldiers scattered around. Had Frieza returned? Gohan ran through the village, calling out for anyone. Finally, he spotted one person 
person barely a lot. The poor Namekian boy barely managed to muster up the words. The Dragon Balls were gone, and the elder was dead. The boy was Dende, who recognized Gohan and hugged him. He then walked over to Piccolo, whom he called Nail. Gohan asked, what happened here? Don't tell me Frieza has been revived. Dente explained that no, it wasn't Frieza. Their Frieza force had indeed attacked. They were looking for the Dragon Balls in order to revive the Emperor, but another spaceship landed. A group of men with masks that defeated the Frieza force. The Namekians thanked them at first, as the leader was the Namekian himself, and he requested the Dragon Balls. He wished for eternal youth, but the Namekian elders became wary of his wishes. They tried to stop him. That was when he read Murray's mind, trying to find out what that power he felt all those years ago was, finding out about Piccolo and the exact wish he made, thus wishing for the potential unleashed. His name was Lord Slug, and his power was beyond anything he could imagine. Many Namekian warriors tried to stop him from making the third wish, but once he threatened to kill the children and the Grand Elder, Slug forced them to agree into a Namekian fusion. The two strongest warriors were absorbed, and the rest died by his hand. The Grand Elder then sacrificed himself so the Dragon Balls could be deactivated, and in his rage, Lord Slug destroyed nearly every village and kidnapped whatever few warriors were left. Very few survived. None of them could believe it. An evil Namekian wishing for youth? This sounded eerily familiar. Piccolo cursed under his breath. It was like facing a mirror image of himself. His father had done the same thing to Earth. They had to stop him. Now. Gohan told them that they needed to gather their thoughts. His plan was to return to Earth and have Dende create a set of Dragon Balls in order to restore Namek. They would find him afterwards. Dende reluctantly agreed. Back home, the young Namekian created a new set of Dragon Balls, which could even grant three wishes, or two if they wanted to revive a large number of people. They used the first wish to revive everyone killed on Namek. They debated the second wish and nearly dismissed Shenron. When Piccolo pushed Gohan, he remembered now. They asked Shenron what the Super Saiyan God was. Thus, the dragon explained the legend. Now that Gohan knew about it, there was no excuse not to obtain it. Goku kinda rolled his eyes at it. Having to rely on others for his own evolution just wasn't his style. But first, they needed to find out more about this slug person. Gohan and Piccolo decide to investigate while Goku and the others gather their friends. If Slug has an army of powerful warriors like Dende warned, then they'll need their help. They went off to ask Beerus and Whis about it, but they haven't heard of anyone named Slug. This did make Beerus wonder if he had gotten the right Namekian from his premonition. The duo decide to head over to Planet Namek again, where Murray happily greeted them. He was so thankful that they saved them, but Piccolo couldn't guarantee their safety just yet. They needed to find out more about Lord Slug first. Murray knew very little, but he did have a suspicion. He asked Gohan to stay at the village while he took Piccolo inside of a cave. Piccolo took slow steps into the cave. It was dark, but Murray illuminated it with a single key ball at the top of his finger. When the light filled the room, Piccolo got a good look at a painting on the wall. Ancient carvings, no doubt from before the Namekian extinction of old. It was a shock to the system, so much so that Piccolo took a step back. To our human eyes, they may mean nothing. And even Piccolo wasn't sure why he felt this way, but he could see something in them. A giant Namekian warrior alongside a winged creature. It was a dark premonition. Surely, Lord Slug and his men. But Piccolo inspected the painting and realized that he could make something out. The face of an old Namekian, a familiar face to him. It seemed to him as if the drawings moved, eroding away everything that was in that single Namekian and the winged creature. Murray admitted that they weren't sure what exactly it meant, but he had a little bit of information about Lord Slug. If they didn't stop him now, he would be a greater threat to the entire universe. Piccolo couldn't look away from the painting, but he promised Murray he would stop Lord Slug. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really like how this is shaping up. I hope you're all intrigued with this. I haven't really gotten to play around with movie characters for a bit, besides my what if Janemba turned good story. So working them into a different what if has been a lot of fun. As always, a huge thank you to the channel supporters. These videos wouldn't be possible without you guys. Whenever possible, I put up videos early on there, as well as some exclusive videos. So if you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a Patreon. And if you're looking for more Dragon Ball content, I just released the full story of what if Trunks stayed in the past. See you guys there!